all right uh, welcome to part 8 yeah, of chapter 20 uh, we were discussing yeah, about inventory management in the previous clip yeah so we continue with that okay so uh, there are two types of costs yeah uh, associated with inventory what is one is carrying cost yeah carrying the other one is uh, um not carrying enough yeah so this is called shortage cost yeah carrying cost and shortage cost just like with uh, cash with receivables and so on yeah we have the same two categories of costs so inventory management tries to find the optimal trade off yeah between carrying too much inventory versus carrying too little yeah or not enough inventory yeah okay so that's the basic key issue yeah in inventory management yeah All right before we move further we look at the various types of inventory yeah so in a manufacturing firm there are three categories of inventory this is just the broad category yeah okay uh, the first broad category is called raw material yeah so these are material that is bought from okay material as well as components yeah uh, bought from the suppliers okay then the second category will be finished goods yeah that means goods that are completed yeah that has completed the manufacturing or production process and it's ready to be sold yeah to the customer that's called finished goods and then the third category will be work in progress now work in progress uh, will cover all the other types of inventory other inventories yeah not a uh, non raw material and non finished goods yeah will come under work in progress yeah so it's like a cash all yeah uh, category so this work in progress actually can have various stages yeah so uh, this is just a broad category yeah so this can be divided further into various uh, categories yeah different stages yeah let's say uh, the production has gone through the first stage okay then that will be the first stage work in progress then you have second stage third stage and so on yeah until it comes to finished goods okay so finished goods will be a separate category and raw material and components yeah, will be a separate category all the others will come under work in progress yeah now uh, remember that one firm's raw material may be another firm's finished goods yeah so there is no universal yeah, definition of raw material yeah so the raw material for one company uh will be the finished goods uh, of the supplier company yeah okay and the finished goods of your company may be the raw material of your customers company all right and therefore this uh, raw material and finished goods will depend on the perspective of the firm yeah the firm that is selling the product or that is using the product yeah or the inventory Okay now this different types of inventory can vary dramatically yeah in terms of liquidity remember liquidity the the term liquidity liquidity means you can convert the item yeah in this case inventory into cash yeah okay easily there are two criteria yeah one is easily the other is without losing value yeah so uh now among these three yeah uh broad categories of inventory the most liquid yeah meaning you can sell easily and without losing value will be arguably yeah it is finished goods okay the next liquid yeah the most liquid after finished goods will be raw material yeah because this is bought from the supplier you can always return it back to the supplier finished goods is very liquid because you have a ready market yeah you know your buyers once it's ready you can always sell it yeah Okay, this is in relative terms. Yeah, relative to one another, finished goods is more liquid than raw material, but raw material is more liquid than work in progress. Yeah, uh, because work in progress, uh, these are at various stages of the production process, so it's very difficult to sell. Yeah, without completing the production process. Okay, so it's less liquid. Yeah, but then raw material uh, and finished goods, these are. usually yeah more liquid yeah that's uh, in a typical uh, business setting yeah all right let's move on now the uh, we were talking about inventory cost yeah if you hold too much inventory okay carry too much inventory there will be costs if you uh, hold too little inventory there will also be costs yeah so what are the costs here Uh, there are two types of cost the first one is carrying cost yeah the second one is shortage cost carrying cost is positively 
related with the amount of inventory you hold yeah shortage cost is negatively related yeah or inversely related with the amount of inventory that you hold yeah so here if you hold more inventory the carrying cost will be greater here if you hold more inventory the shortage cost will be lower okay so that's the difference yeah now um, carrying cost can range from between 20% to 40% of the inventory value in one year yeah so this includes storage and tracking yeah? especially if you have various types of inventory you need to track okay where they are yeah you may need to use barcodes you know and things like that yeah uh, scanners you know things like that to track yeah to trace yeah or to monitor the movement of the inventory okay so this uh, is costly yeah it requires cost then you also have to pay insurance for the inventory okay to protect it from uh, danger or fire for example or from from theft yeah and things like that and yeah? so insurance premium you have to pay the more you carry the more insurance premium that you have to pay yeah and some inventory yeah you need to pay tax uh, because it may be dangerous yeah this tax will be imposed by the local authority or the government and things like that yeah? for example alcohol or uh, it could be flammable yeah liquids yeah like gases and so on yeah there'll be some taxes there could be some taxes yeah so all these uh, are associated with carrying cost then there is this loss of obsolescence yeah? obsolescence means the inventory becomes outdated yeah that means it's not uh, there's not much demand yeah there's not much demand in the market because it's outdated yeah it is uh, beyond the shelf uh, date yes uh, sell by date okay so it becomes obsolete yeah then sometimes the inventory deteriorates over time yeah okay for example perishable goods yeah after some time the goods become unsellable yeah? you cannot uh, sell it or it can be due to theft yeah this theft can be done by uh, the employee employees yeah working for the firm yeah they can actually uh, uh, steal yeah or take away yeah? uh, uh, without authority yeah this inventory that's held by the company yeah then the major cost yeah carrying cost will be opportunity cost of capital because much of your funds are tied up as inventory okay you need financing yeah so this financing is costly yeah you need to borrow or you need to issue equity yeah in order to get funds so these funds are not free yeah they are costly okay therefore all this yeah, make up the carrying cost yeah so the more inventory you hold greater will be these costs yeah and this add to the carrying cost now the second category will be shortage cost yeah and shortage cost will be lower with greater inventory and it will be higher with lower inventory yeah and there are two types of costs yeah uh, shortage cost the first one is restocking or reordering yeah you have to order when you don't have enough inventory you place an order so this placing of order has some costs yeah but this is actually a minor cost yeah uh, in uh, in most cases yeah this restocking or reordering cost is actually quite minor the major cost is this yeah lost sales or lost customers because you don't have in enough inventory or production stoppages yeah you don't have enough raw material for example or components then the production may have to stop yeah so you still have to pay some overhead costs yeah you need to pay wages you need to pay the workers uh, salary and so on but you don't have any production yeah so this is costly yeah this happens because you don't have enough inventory in stock okay so this is a, sh a shortage cost but this is quite difficult to measure yeah this product the loss arising from production stoppages lost customer or lost sales yeah because this is an opportunity loss yeah you won't know until you actually lose it yeah so it is very difficult to measure this uh, cost yeah but we know that this cost is there all right now we need to consider both this cost and try to minimize yeah the total cost yeah the total cost of inventory will be carrying cost plus shortage cost yeah so we need to minimize both yeah now the relationship between the level of inventory this is the level of inventory the x-axis 
the y-axis is the cost yeah, of inventory and yeah, the two types of cost this is the shortage cost yeah, or restocking cost yeah this is oops one moment okay yeah, this is the restocking cost yeah and the blue line here the straight line is the carrying cost yeah higher the carrying cost high sorry higher the inventory higher the carrying cost and the green line says higher the inventory lower the restocking cost yeah so you can say generally yeah, this is the uh, cost for uh, shortage yeah, shortage cost yeah now this orange line yeah, orange curve is the total cost yeah it's the addition of green and blue lines yeah this is the orange curve and you find that this is the minimum yeah minimum yeah the total cost is minimized here yeah? therefore this is called the optimal inventory size yeah now know that the optimal inventory size occurs when the restocking cost is equal to the carrying cost at this point yeah at this intercept yeah between these two curves yeah or two lines okay so this point is the optimal size if you uh, hold too much inventory then your carrying cost will be higher and your total cost will go up if you hold too little inventory your shortage cost yeah or restocking cost will go up and this will increase your total cost yeah so at this point it is optimal yeah so you sh you should hold this level of inventory yeah that is based on concept yeah? in reality it is very difficult yeah to determine this level of inventory yeah because you don't hold one level of inventory uh, or one type of inventory you hold many uh, different inventories yeah so it is quite difficult to determine the optimal level yeah Okay, but conceptually we know that there should be an optimal level yeah? uh, and this may not be an optimal point it could be an optimal range yeah but this is uh, in terms of appreciating the concept yeah we'll look at how we can quantify this yeah in the next uh, slide yeah in the coming slides okay now we come to the last part of uh, this chapter we are going to look at uh, methods yeah, or techniques of inventory management. Yeah, just now it was just an introduction to inventory management. Okay, we looked at the various costs. Yeah, now we are going to look at the inventory management techniques yeah, or methods. Okay, the first method is called the ABC approach. Yeah, the ABC approach actually classifies yeah, classifies the inventory by cost, demand, or need. Yeah it categorizes the inventory based on some uh, criteria okay now those items that have substantial shortage costs yeah, it means uh, if you don't have those items those inventory items then the shortage cost will be very high therefore you must maintain these items in larger quantities yeah okay yeah than those with lower shortage costs. Yeah? So you look at the shortage costs. Yeah? So you can classify the inventory based on the level of shortage cost for each inventory, each type of inventory. Yeah? Okay, but generally the ABC approach, what it does is that it categorizes inventory into three yeah? broad categories. The first one is called type A inventory. So here, type A inventory are very expensive items yeah because they are expensive you cannot hold too much yeah so you try and hold smaller quantities of expensive items yeah I expensive inventory items okay and type c is the opposite yeah these are uh, not so expensive uh, or least expensive you if you uh, like yeah so these are called basic material or uh, less expensive basic material these material you can hold a lot yeah, because the cost is not very high the carrying cost will be lower for type c yeah? for type a the carrying cost will be very high therefore you hold smaller quantities of type a now what about b yeah? b is in between yeah so we look at the extreme first so whatever doesn't fall into this uh, two extreme groups they fall into b yeah so b you hold moderate level of inventory Okay, so that is the ABC approach yeah, of inventory management. It's quite simple actually. Then we come to the EOQ model. Yeah? So this is uh, the quantitative model. Yeah? The ABC approach is more of a qualitative yeah, method. 
Now, this EOQ is a quantitative model of inventory management. Yeah. Now, the EOQ tries to.